It's a part of New York known for its live jazz clubs, soul food restaurants, and African-American heritage. You guessed it. Today, we're taking a trip up to Harlem, a bustling, multi-ethnic haven in uptown Manhattan full of history and culture. Originally settled in 1658 by the Dutch and named after the town of Harlem in the Netherlands, this former suburb of New York City is actually a collection of many smaller neighborhoods within one larger neighborhood. To name them all, there's East Harlem, Central Harlem, and West Harlem, which includes even smaller divisions such as Morningside Heights, Manhattanville, Hamilton Heights, and Sugar Hill. Yes, folks, Harlem is huge. And a hundred years from a time when the Harlem Renaissance of art, music, and literature was in full swing, it is again experiencing many changes. But this time around, the changes come in economic growth and real estate development. Today, Harlem has become an essential part of the New York City tourist itinerary. Now equipped with several Starbucks and even a Whole Foods, many out-of-towners are flocking to Harlem to experience the action firsthand. So without further delay, here are 10 reasons to love Harlem, New York. Number 1. The Shopping Over the past couple of decades, many chain stores and high-end boutiques have moved in to the detriment of many small Harlem business owners who were once the established residents of the business community. Though no one can stop gentrification from happening, contributing directly to a small business can still make a difference in the lives of those business owners who were given this neighborhood its unique vibe, heritage, and identity over the years. So if you're looking for some Harlem-made fashions, beauty supplies, or African imports, Harlem is where it's at. In addition to the local shops are the multitude of street vendors selling incense, oils, music, and African accessories. You can spend hours sampling the different scents, each with one getting better than the last. Another great place for unique buys is the Malcolm Shabazz Market on 116th Street, offering you a colorful selection of handmade West African crafts, clothing, fabrics, and accessories. There's plenty more to be found scattered throughout Harlem. Some of the best streets for great shopping are 125th Street, 116th Street, Frederick Douglass Boulevard, and Amsterdam Avenue. Number 2. It's a neighborhood rich in museums. In case you didn't know, Museum Mile isn't only on the Upper East Side. In fact, it extends on Fifth Avenue well into Harlem, offering you even more of a selection of fantastic museums to choose from. Some of these museums include the Museum of the City of New York on 104th Street, presenting New York City's entire history from past to present. Right next door on 105th Street, you'll come across El Museo del Barrio, New York City's only museum dedicated to Puerto Rican, Caribbean, and Latin American art. Lastly, at the very top of Museum Mile, you'll find the Africa Center, a cultural institution devoted to education and contemporary African art. In addition to Museum Mile, you also have the Studio Museum in Harlem on 125th Street, featuring works by artists of African descent, and the National Jazz Museum on 129th Street, dedicated to preserving and celebrating the jazz history of Harlem. Number three, the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture. This is a huge building located on Malcolm X Boulevard between 135th and 136th Street. As a research division of the New York Public Library, it houses multiple facilities catering to the research, preservation, and the exhibition of artifacts focused on the history and culture of people of African descent. Established in 1926 during the Harlem Renaissance with the personal collection of Afro-Puerto Rican scholar Arthur Alfonso Schomburg, the center today has amassed a vast collection of over 11 million items relating to people of African descent worldwide. In addition, the Schomburg Center hosts book readings, discussions, art exhibitions, tours, and theater events. It is open for free to the general public and for almost a century has played an integral role in the Harlem community. Number four, the street art. We all love it in New York when we come upon a tastefully done wall of graffiti or when a humongous mural stops us dead in our tracks. Yes, New York City is no stranger to street art and it's all over. 
However, each neighborhood has its own unique masterpieces, and Harlem street art definitely has its own way of stopping you dead in your tracks. Some jaw-dropping gems are the Graffiti Wall of Fame on East 106th Street, the Crackers Whack Playground by Keith Haring on East 127th Street and 2nd Avenue, the facade at Harlem Hospital, and there's so much more. At any given time, there are usually several mural projects going on. Some are used to bring attention to specific causes such as the Audubon Mural Project with its murals scattered throughout Hamilton Heights. Some of their murals are painted on shop security gates, so you may not even get to see them until after hours when the shops are closed and the gates come down. There's also the Education is Not a Crime Project with murals throughout all of Harlem. You're welcome to sign up for some of the walking tours specifically for murals. Or if you're feeling really spontaneous and adventurous, feel free to venture out on your own to discover them yourself. Number 5. Real Good Food Hungry for some real good soul food? Or perhaps some real good Caribbean, African, or Latino cooking? Well, Harlem has all of that. It's one of those places in New York where you'll find tons of restaurants to appease your cravings for soul and spice. For some awesome soul food, you can choose from Amy Roots, Sylvia's, Melba's, The Red Rooster, and way too many more than I have room to mention. Want some Caribbean? There's Sisters, Kingston, Freddy Soul, and plenty more. For African, there's Safari, Les Ambassades, La Savane, and you guessed it, so much more. And what's that? You want to know more about Puerto Rican food? Well, for starters, you can try Cuchifrito, La Fonda Boricua, and El San Juan, with lots more throughout East Harlem. When it comes to flavorful ethnic cuisine, I doubt you'll run out of options in Harlem anytime soon. Number 6. The Apollo Theater Known as the first theater in New York to desegregate the races, the Apollo got its start in 1934 at the tail end of the Harlem Renaissance. This legendary concert hall located on 125th Street between Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard and Frederick Douglass Boulevard is the place where many greats got their start. We're talking about big names like James Brown, Stevie Wonder, Ella Fitzgerald, Aretha Franklin, the Jackson 5, and so many more. Now a New York City landmark, you can still catch a show at the Apollo or schedule a historic group tour of the venue. And the best show, as we all know, is Amateur Night, which usually takes place Wednesday evenings at 7.30 p.m. Number 7. It's Beautiful Parks. The list is endless in Harlem when it comes to natural landscapes and recreational activities. There are so many parks to spend a leisurely summer afternoon. Many are equipped with sports fields, recreation centers, pools, and even amphitheaters. Others are more geared towards simple nature walks and embracing the beauty that surrounds you. In Sugar Hill, there's the Jackie Robinson Park. In Hamilton Heights, there's St. Nicholas Park and Riverbank State Park. In Morningside Heights, you have Morningside Park, as well as Riverside Park leading us all the way down the Upper West Side while providing breathtaking views of the Hudson. In Central Harlem, you can enjoy Marcus Garvey Park. In East Harlem, there's Thomas Jefferson Park. And of course, we can't forget Northern Central Park, bordering much of South Harlem from East Side to West Side and offering you a landscape that's totally unique from the more touristy sections, but equally as beautiful and serene. Number 8. Hamilton Grange On the northern edge of St. Nicholas Park is a restored mansion that was once the home of Alexander Hamilton. Built in 1802 on a 32-acre plot in what we now know as the Hamilton Heights section of Harlem, it was the only home he ever owned and enjoyed it for only two years before meeting his demise at that fateful duel in Weehawken, New Jersey. The federal-style mansion was moved from its original Colonial Hilltop location in 1889 and then again in 2008 to its final resting spot off of West 141st Street and is now a national memorial and a museum. Inside, you will find tastefully restored rooms and an interactive exhibit for visitors. Today, Hamilton Grange is managed by the National Park Service and admission and group tours are offered to the public free of charge. 
Number nine, the General Grant National Memorial. Who knew that Harlem was such a hotbed of national memorials? Another great national site to visit is the General Grant National Memorial at the northern tip of Riverside Park. This is the final resting place of Ulysses S. Grant, the 18th President of the United States, and his wife, Julia Grant. Unless you're from the neighborhood, practically no one in New York knows about this place, let alone the tourists. Though Grant died in 1885, the mausoleum was not completed until 12 years after his death in 1897 due to disagreements regarding his final resting place and the massive fundraising required to start construction. The General Grant National Memorial is the largest mausoleum in North America and is a neoclassical sight to behold with its ionic columns and domed rotunda overlooking the Hudson River. Within the walls of the mausoleum are exquisite architectural detailing and central are two matching red granite sarcophagi of Grant and his wife laying side by side. A few steps away, you'll also find a visitor center, all equipped with a bookstore, memorabilia, a movie about Grant's life, and restrooms. After a long day of uptown exploration, the General Grant National Memorial is a quiet spot to catch your breath and sit in peace while honoring a former president. And last but not least, number 10, its historic districts. Harlem has its fair share of historic districts scattered throughout all of its neighborhoods. And what a way to spend a sunny afternoon than by strolling through some of these charming residential streets just to witness century-old facades just brimming with character. Some of the buildings have been well-preserved over the years, while many others have been well restored back to their original glory. One notable area is the St. Nicholas Historic District, where you'll find a collection of stately row houses that some of the most up-and-coming African Americans lived in back in the day, hence the name Strivers Row. Another great area valuable to Harlem's culture is the Central Harlem Historic District. Characterized by its gorgeous set of 164 19th century row houses, of which many of the local actors and musicians of the Harlem Renaissance called home. The Hamilton Heights Sugar Hill West Harlem Historic District is another very stylish part of town where affluent, prominent, and influential African Americans lived during the Harlem Renaissance. Last but not least, there's Astor Row, a set of 28 row houses completed in 1883 by the Astor family. What's unique about this adorable little enclave is that the homes are set back from the street and come with flower gardens out front, side walkways, as well as wooden porches, features that were rarely found in Manhattan back then, let alone today. For those of you who love peering underneath the fabric of old New York and are fascinated by the charm of old architecture, you'll find much to see in Harlem. And for the other historic districts that I failed to mention, well, you'll just have to discover those on your own. I've left the link in the description in case you're interested. And that's about all I have for you today on Harlem, New York. Hopefully you'll get a chance to experience the endless supply of special places and activities awaiting you in this vibrant neighborhood. If you have anything else about Harlem that you'd like to add to this list, you know the drill. Feel free to share it with us in the comments below. And be sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more on New York City, our favorite city that never sleeps. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see each other next time.